TDR Tuscans rolling out in beautiful sunshine conditions at Brands Hatch. Michael Kane on the outside of Greg Caton, but outside Jamie Campbell Walter was Mike Jordan. He got forced wide, and Caton now in second place, right underneath Campbell Walter's back bumper. Still, Jordan was there alongside, but he was on the dusty part of the circuit, outbraked himself, and so Greg Caton moves up to second. A couple of other drivers going wide there and TVR development engineer John Reed spinning the number 12 company car. Well, he'll rejoin at the back of the field, which means he'll have to uh, try and catch and pass the boss if he's to lose any brownie points from this one. On board with Steve Cole, right ahead of us, Troy Dunlop. Cole started on the outside of the fifth row of the grid. And there is the number 77 Mike Jordan car battling with Greg Caton. Gets back in front at Hawthorns. So Jordan still very much a, a force to contend with here. Down they go through Dingle Dell and up to the Dingle Dell chicane. And that must be pretty awesome in one of these cars at high speed, especially on cold-ish tyres on the first lap. There's Troy Dunlop trying to make up a place. Everybody still jostling for position all the way around this opening tour. And there's Hildebrand there trying to pick up a spot. And we pick up the second, third and fourth place battle. Jordan from Caton and Kane behind them. Jamie Campbell Walter out front and on his own already, the race leader. Here he comes. And as they crest the rise, will it be Jordan or Caton who has the advantage? Looks like Caton's got his nose back in front. Caton gets back in front. What a great race this pair are having. Michael Kane in the middle of it as well. Inside Mike Jordan. Wheel to wheel, and as they exit onto the Grand Prix circuit, no contact made with Buzz Dawkins further back down the field. Through Graham Hill Bend, and still this battle continues. Jordan was at the front of it, now at the back of it a lap later. And Caton from Kane and Jordan, two, three and four. Don't suspect we'll see too much of Jamie Campbell Walter in this race unless he slows down to allow them to catch up and join in with him. There he is out front. Greg Caton, Michael Kane, and Mike Jordan, second, third, and fourth. Through Pilgrim's Drop, you see the spectator banks raised above the track, giving the crowd a great chance to look into the cockpit of the cars here. These TVR Tuscans allow the crowd to see the driver at work. But from that viewing point, you can even watch Formula One drivers ply their trade back in the 80s. Well, Dawkins here, now through clearways, and a good run through clearways as well. Had to have a fractional little lift there, but gets a good run on the car in front. And then down to Paddock Hill Bend, one of the most daunting corners in motor racing. Fast daunting, dangerous and blind. Just the way we like them, but Dawkins gets hooked up across the front of a rival as he gets to Druids. He was on the inside the Iredale line, but he just got touched by the car beside him and spun off across the track into the gravel. Forget it, says the marshal, that's all done for the day, and indeed it is. Jamie Campbell Walter still leading from Greg Caton, Michael Kane, and Mike Jordan. Second, third and fourth unchanged. Flash of the headlights there from Jordan. Right behind in fifth place is Steve Hyde. And there is Troy Dunlop chasing Darren Dowling. But all of them trailing in the wake of Jamie Campbell Walter. Still Kane right on the tail of Caton for second place. Looking here as they come into clearways. That would be a very brave move indeed. Doesn't get anything achieved there, but gets a great run across the line on the Brabham straight there, wheel to wheel. But Caton has the inside line and drifts up to the outside to take the racing line, and Kane can't do anything about it. Up to Druids we go with Greg Caton. Oh, misses the apex. Kane's inside him. Very close racing indeed. The camera's showing just how close. Down into Graham Hill Bend again, breaking hard. Don't forget they're going downhill and turning as the road drops away. And that unloads that left front wheel, which then locks slightly and smokes itself. 
Onto the Grand Prix loop we come then. Over the hill, down Pilgrim Drop. Up Hawthorne Hill to Hawthorne Bend. Through the flat out right hander, Greg Caton still right with Michael Kane. And then they come down again. Into Dingle Dell, into the compression, and then flying over the top of the brow, there's the chicane, and they really do hit the curbs hard and take off clear across it through the left hander at Stirlings. And here comes the chasing pack. On board with Steve Cole into Stirlings, the left hander. She'll be closer to the apex than that, but a good run through. And now the run down the hill to Clearways. There is Cole under pressure from Ben Samuelson, the TVR PR man. Looks after all their road and racing, public relations and press matters. Replay here of Buzz Dawkins on the left, getting hooked up across the nose of Bill Collins' machine and spinning out. Well, that was a lap or so ago. Still plenty of cars on the track for the spectators to enjoy and lots and lots of close racing. Oh my goodness me! Well that was a very spectacular off. Flicked up into the air, Gareth Evans there. And he was lucky to come down the right way up but uh, no chance of slowing the car with all the wheels in the air. And it was Gary Brittle's machine that he went over the top of there, car 22. Meanwhile, the leaders or the group behind the leaders still hard at it as Caton makes a mistake Jordan goes inside him and the run through Hawthorne pays dividends as they head down into Dingle Dell Greg Caton is down to fourth Jordan up into third place now can Jordan catch Kane as we ride the curbs with Caton into Sterling's Bend and into the pits has come the 57 machine of Richard Hay, run out of brakes. And the black and yellow quartered flag is being shown. Jamie Campbell-Walter will slow down, bring the field under control. This is uh, an assumed safety car situation. It's because of this, you see the 22 car of Gary Britton move over to his right without realizing that Gareth Evans was making a move up the inside there. Contact, Evans briefly airborne and the cars needing to be retrieved. Well, Jamie Campbell-Walter making a good restart at the green. Already four or five car lengths ahead as he gets to Paddock Hill Bend and nobody very much speeding up behind him, it seems, apart from the lead group. Michael Kane still second, Mike Jordan third, Greg Caton fourth, running wide there. Steve Hyde giving away fifth position to Troy Dunlop in the wine-colored car. So Hyde drops down to sixth place. And he's right ahead of Ed Sharp, Darren Dowling, Giles Cooper and the rest as, well, rather bizarrely, Steve Cole runs out of road. Maybe his tyres weren't warm enough or his brakes were too cold. But uh, Steve Cole just running off the Graham Hill bend and onto the grass and the dust there. Mike Jordan here in car 77, pushing hard, very hard indeed, sliding there as he chases Michael Kane and Jamie Campbell-Walter. Wonder if Kane can now get onto terms with Campbell-Walter. The works lister driver and former TVR champion was fastest in qualifying, won his heat at a faster speed than Jordan won his heat and started from pole position, never been headed indeed, barely been challenged since the first corner. Greg Caton there in fourth place with Mike Jordan and the top four are splitting into two packs, aren't they? Caton challenging Jordan for third and Kane trying to catch Campbell Walter for the lead. Caton inside Jordan at Paddock. There's no fight back against that at Paddock. You've got to try and work your way back on the leg up to Druids. Well, Kane right with Campbell Walter. How much has Jamie got in hand? And uh, how much can Michael Kane push him? Caton still just ahead of Jordan into Graham Hill Bend. And off goes Matt Damon in car 34 to join the increasing number in the gravel there. Oh dear, and Jordan pushing Caton through Surtees and onto the Grand Prix loop because Caton wasn't going quickly enough. Not a problem for Michael Kane as he chases Jamie Campbell Walter. That damaged bodywork rubbing on the rear tyre may cause a problem in forthcoming laps for Greg Caton. 
Might also serve to make him a little nervous of Mike Jordan behind him. Well, here they come again through Dingle Dell. Somebody is popping and banging. Maybe that's Michael Caine pushing his car ahead of them very hard indeed behind Jamie Campbell Walter. Well, the lead pair getting away from Caton, and he's got more to worry about. Mike Jordan still intent on getting by for third spot and a podium finish. Out of paddock, he comes up the inside into Druids. Caton can't fight against it. Jordan was there. Jordan goes back up to third spot. Now, can Greg Caton fight back through Graham Hill Bend? Starts out wide, cuts into the inside, returns the favor as he thumps Jordan's car up the backside. Now, through Surtees and out onto the Grand Prix circuit they go. Graphic shots there as Jordan rides the curbs. The car flicks its tail a little sideways. Ben Samuelson under pressure here. Further back from the 67, car in the cameras. And the marshals sent flying as Steve Cole runs out of room in the biggest way. Well, that's a very high speed place to go off. And as Hildebrand recovers, and maybe there was something there that sent Cole off in the first place. Contact perhaps between them. Caton with Jordan, yellow flags are out. There's Cole's car right in the middle of the road at the chicane. And another one gone. Off he goes into the gravel. Rod Barrett very dangerously placed there. So the red flags are thrown. The race stopped after nine laps completed. And here with Steve Cole. Let's see what happens with Anders Hildebrand. No, he just runs off the road. Well, 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 well. I've seen cars go off there before, but it's normally in the rain, and that's a very strange incident. Whatever, Jamie Campbell-Walter visits the series and picks up the trophies. Michael Caine finally classified as second, and although Mike Jordan's there on the right-hand side of the podium, he did, in fact, finish fourth as they counted back to the last complete lap behind Greg Caton. Caine still leads the series, though.